Good evening, church. We are glad that you are with us tonight. Those that are in the house, those that are listening at home, we are so grateful that you have decided to worship with us tonight. And we are here to worship. We're not here to be seen. We're not here to be heard. We are here to hear from him and to see Jesus. And I hope that's what you've come for tonight. I hope that's why you've tuned in. An old song of the church simply says, Victory in Jesus. Let's sing together tonight. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groan Wait a minute, Susan. Let's go back and start over. I got to find this music. I forgot to turn it all on, and I can't read the book and do this all at one time. Okay, now I got it. Let's start again. I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and he caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. 
Do you have the victory tonight? Good. I'm glad you can say that. Another old song that says, He brought me out of the deep miry clay, and he set my feet on the solid rock to stay. Let's sing together tonight. My heart was distressed neath Jehovah's dread frown, and lo, in the pit where my sins dragged me down, I cried to the Lord from the deep miry clay, who tenderly brought me out to golden day. He brought me out of the deep miry clay, he set my feet on the solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my happy soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. You know, Craig and I were talking right before church that some of these old songs have words in them that aren't written. And I think most of you have already picked it up, but when we get there on that course, it says, he brought me out of the deep miry clay. He set my feet on the solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my happy soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. He placed me upon the strong rock by his side. My steps were established and here I'll abide. No danger of falling while here I remain but stand by his grace until the crown I came. He brought me out of the deep miry clay. He set my feet on the solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my happy soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. He gave me a song, t'was a new song of praise. By day and by night, his sweet notes I will raise. My heart's overflowing, I'm happy and free. I'll praise my Redeemer who has rescued me. He brought me out of the deep miry clay. He set my feet on the solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my happy soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. I'll sing of his wonderful mercy to me. I'll praise him till all men his goodness shall see. I'll sing of salvation at home and abroad till many shall hear the truth and trust in God. He brought me out of the deep miry clay. He set my feet on the solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my happy soul today, a song of praise. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad tonight that he picks us up out of the mire and out of the clay, out of all the muck, and he sets our feet on the solid rock? And can I tell you something? That rock is just as solid on the top as it is on the bottom, Jack. That's the solid rock that we stand on, and we can be grateful for that tonight. Another old song of the church says, love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, but his love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, 
love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best song. Faithful, loving service to, to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Amen. You all sound good tonight. I can imagine what your neighbors are thinking out there, those of you that are singing at the top of your lungs at home. I hope they're wondering what you're doing because they're hearing the gospel is what they're doing when we sing these old songs little course we do sometimes around here, and I think most of you know, I probably wouldn't even need to put these words up. But aren't you glad for those little words that says, God is so good. He's so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good, he's so good to me. I love him so, I love him so, I love him so. He's so good to me. God answers prayer. God answers prayer. God answers prayer. He's so good to And I'll praise his name. I'll praise his name. I'll praise his name. He's so good to me. I'm going to ask Susan to keep playing that. I like this little verse here that says, God answers prayer. Aren't you glad for a God that answers prayer? He knows what we need just when we need it. He's never late. He's always on time. And we need him to meet us here in this place tonight. We don't have to sit here and beg and plead for him to come because he's already said he'd be here. That's the beauty of our God. He wants to be where his people are and his people ought to want to be where he is. And I'm glad that we can be in his presence tonight. I'm sure there are a lot of requests out there that we need to remember, but I want to ask for one special prayer request tonight. It's somebody that most of you or probably none of you all know, but his name is Mark. We have a little eight-year-old boy on our 
baseball team or on Scott's baseball team. Little eight-year-old uh, baseball player by the name of Gage. Gage's grandpa, it's actually his great-grandfather and great-grandmother take care of him. And about a year or so ago, we found out that Mark had cancer and evidently things aren't going well. And they had to take Mark back to the hospital last night. He was admitted uh, back into the hospital last night. And so I would just ask that you would remember Mark, that God's presence would just go to them. I'm not sure if they're Christians. I don't know if they know the Lord or not. I know Scott's been trying to minister with them and to them. But if you would just pray for Mark, I would appreciate it. And pray for Gage, that little eight-year-old. Something happens to Grandma and Grandpa. It's hard to tell what will happen to this little fella. I mean, he's a wonderful little boy. We got to eat lunch with him today after a ball game. And I mean, just as sweet as can be. He went to church with Scott and Megan and the kids this morning. They picked him up early for the ball game and took him to church with them. Don't know if Gage has ever been to church before. It's kind of strange because a couple weeks ago, one of Landon's friends spent the night and he was talking about going to church. This little seven-year-old or eight-year-old looked at Landon and he said, I've never been to church. You see, we think everybody's been to church, Craig. We think everybody's already heard, but there are people out there that have never heard. There are kids that don't get those Bible lessons. There are kids out there that don't hear about what a wonderful Savior Jesus is. Would you just remember these that I've mentioned tonight and just pray that somehow, some way, Scott's kind of taken it on as a ministry. I mean, you think of baseball and you think, well, that's just athletics. But you know what? Scott's making it a ministry. A lot of these games, I, I've seen my son gather his boys around. He said, okay, before we get started, let's pray. And I'm thinking, what? You're out, we're out here praying on a baseball field. Woo, glory. That's something to get excited about. But would you just pray for these kids and for Mark tonight that God would just intercede. Father, tonight we love you. And truly you are good. Far better to us than we'll ever begin to understand why you would love us so much and be so good to us. But we are grateful tonight for you. Father, tonight we're grateful that you give victory. We're grateful tonight that you've picked us up out of the miry clay and set our feet on the solid rock. We're thankful tonight for the love that came down and lifted us up. And we can sing tonight that you've been so good to us. Father, tonight I pray for these requests. Father, I pray for Mark tonight laying in that hospital. We don't know how much more time he's got. Father, we don't know his spiritual state. But I pray, Father, that somehow, some way, that you would speak to his heart. And Father, that somehow, some way, you'd send somebody into that room to minister to him. Father, for Gage for little DJ, for those ball players that my son is influencing out there on the ball field. Father, I pray that somehow, some way, that you would just speak to their little hearts and let them see that there's a God that loves them and a God that cares. Father, we know there's other needs in a congregation of this size, both here in the house and also online, and we just Pray, Father, that you would meet us at the point of our needs. We know that you're a good God. And you won't hold, withhold anything good from your children. Father, I pray tonight for Craig as he shares the message. Would you anoint your servant with power from on high? May the words that come out of his mouth not be his words, but might they be your words. Father, I pray that you would use him tonight 
to bring praise, honor, and glory to your name. Father, we pray that tonight when we leave this place, we'll be able to say that it's been good to be in your house. And Father, we just believe tonight that we'll be able to say that because you truly are good. In Jesus' name. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Would you pray for Craig as he comes and shares the message this evening? to wake up each day and you begin to see the green of the grass and and a flower bloom and you know even though we know we're going to get an easter snow you start seeing the easter lilies and we all get worried right before we do it every year we all get worried that the frost is going to get them but the easter lilies come and then we begin to look at the trees and we just notice a leaf here and there and and before you know it we look outside and it's it's green and it's full of life and the flowers are beautiful, and, and the trees are beautiful at my house, so we have to buy ferns. Now, Jack, I'll be real honest. They all look the same to me. I, I can't tell the difference in these ferns, but my wife, she loves her ferns. And so on our porch, we've got all of our ferns and a hanging basket of flowers, and, and we bought flowers from the church, and we've got, I don't even remember what we're doing with all of those, but I, I see all of these all of these flowers and, and these trees, and I begin to see the beauty that God has surrounded us with. And so I began to think about this seasons that we see. And, and I wondered, do we go through seasons in life that God looks at us and maybe we look a little more barren and a little, a little drier and a little more dead? And, and then there are seasons of our life where we truly get into to his word, and we get into to his love, and, and he begins to see green and fresh, and, and he sees us as these beautiful flowers. And so I picked up one of these. Now this is, for tonight's purposes, this, this is a, a nursery pot. I got thinking about what if every tree we had we just put in a, a nursery pot? What if every tree that began to grow, we stuck in this pot and never took it out? Would we have the trees that we have? Would we have the mountains? Would we have pretty apple trees in your front yard and all of those things? And, and the answer to that is no. If we were to put things only in a nursery pot and leave it there, it would never grow into the big mass of trees and things that we see. They, they would never bear fruit as they were intended. They, they would never grow and give shade and do all of the things that they were meant to do if they were content in their nursery pot. Now, I'm with a pretty wise crowd tonight. I think you're already kind of connecting those pieces. That not only are we talking about physical trees, but we're talking about ourselves and our spiritual lives and, and the growth that we have. And we can't be content, Jack, living 
only in a nursery pot. So, so what I realize is when I, when I look at this nursery pot and, and I see those things and, and we, could, we, could have a, we could have a tree in here and it could be, you know, 12 inches tall, 14 inches tall. And, and it functions as a tree. I mean, you could argue with me it's not a tree, it is a tree, but I, I would tell you if I planted an apple tree in there and it grew that tall, it's, it functions as a tree. But what I want to challenge you tonight as we begin to think about the plants, we begin to think of our growth, and we begin to think of how we need to be rooted, that we're not content with just functioning, but that we choose to flourish. I believe now more than ever in the world that we're in, there is so much darkness, there is so much sadness, there are people seeking so many things. We can't afford to live in the nursery pot any longer. We, we as a church can't be content in growing comfortably in this nursery pot. And so I began looking into the Word, and there's many places throughout the Bible and many places through Scripture that, that talks of different things in planting and growing. David the psalmist loved to get into that. Psalm 92 says this, it says, The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. I like this. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no wickedness in him. So it tells me the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. It will flourish in the courts of our God. And guess what, Jack? It never ages out. <laughs> it doesn't get to a point where it no longer is of use. It says it still bears fruit in old age. I believe God sees it this way. It still stays fresh and green. Now, I believe our callings may change as we go through lives. I believe that, that God may have us here for a while and a season here for a while. And, and as we get older, maybe we can't do the things we did in our youth at 20 years old. Or maybe, maybe God has grown us and we have other opportunities and it's not the same as it was when we were 30 years old. But it still can be fresh. It can still be green. God still has a purpose for you. And it's not just to function. It's not just to be content being a tree. But he says, no, no matter the age, no matter where you are at in life, I want you to flourish. I want you to be fruitful. I want you to grow. I, I got reading earlier about this, and this was honestly something I had just found out today. I had... Uh, got reading on what happens with the roots and when you have a, a small pot a lot of times there'll be clay pots or something and and those roots will get to the point where they can't stand it anymore they they i mean they're all but busting out and and some of them get to the point they grow so fast and so strong and so hard you have to just break the pot because it wants to get out so bad it's not content any longer in the nursery pot for it to grow and do the things that it is supposed to do you have to get it out of the nursery pot. David says this in the first psalm. He said, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruits in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. One of the things in this for me is as this tree begins to grow, it talks about being near the stream of water. See, water is an important source. You, you must have water to grow. It, it needs that. You know, as the, as the rain begins to come, and, and you'll see the tree leaves, they'll turn up. I mean, it's like they just begin to praise God for what's about to come. I mean, everything turns up in those trees, and I've, I've noticed it, and all the trees look a little different, and the light of the bottom of the leaves begin to show as they, as they begin to, 
As they begin to praise and get ready to accept all that God has for them, and as the, the water begins to fall, we are no different. We must have that living water in our life if we're going to flourish. We, we must have Jesus Christ, that living water within us, for us to be able to grow as he wants. Now see, uh, Kenny and I talked this morning, we, we've had different skills in our lives. We've, we've tried to grow our own paths and who we are and the things that we do. And, but to be successful in the house of God, to be successful in ministry, to be able to reach other people, most importantly, we must die out to God. We, we must have that living water within us to be able to grow and not just function, but flourish. And so I watch some of these trees, I watch some of these plants, and I, I'm not content with just surviving. I get one chance at this life. I, I get one chance at this life. I, I mean, it, it's here today and it's gone tomorrow. The more I see and the more that we lose people that we love and you know, I have a daughter over there. We see these things, and, and life is just, it's just a vapor. I, I could choose, I guess, just to survive. I, I guess I could choose to live in the nursery pot and be content and never grow and, and just survive. Man, the more I've gotten in that living water and the more I've decided to grow within him and the more I've tried to seek his face and in my troubles and in my tragedies and those parts of my life, the more that I have called out his name, I realize I can't just survive. I want to thrive. <laughs> I love when God gives it to me in rhymes. <laughs> That's not always on purpose, but sometimes it just jumps out there. And I said, God, that is exactly where I am in life. I do not want to just survive and function as a small tree. But God, I want to flourish and I want to thrive and be fruitful. To where when people look at me, they see you. And not Craig. See, I, I mess up a lot of things. I'm far from perfect. I don't know if any of y'all know this or not. You're far from perfect too. But I just want to seek God's face in all that's done. I'm not willing to live in this nursery pot. I can't live in this nursery pot and expect to see great things. That little apple tree we're talking about, it grow up there, and I don't know, maybe... Maybe a little apple pops up on it. Won't be any good. Won't be good for a whole lot. But if you can take that and get it rooted in the right soil, you get it rooted in the right place, and it'll begin to grow. It'll begin to flourish. It'll begin to thrive. And it'll begin to be fruitful. Sometimes life, it can be overwhelming. Sometimes it feels out of control. There's times I felt like God was far away. There's times maybe I didn't feel his warmth like I, like I wanted or didn't feel his love. I get lost in the direction of my life. I mean, these are all things that have been there and and I look at those points in my life and I realize I wasn't thriving in any of those. I just was trying to survive. I, I've shared with you many times as I've preached. I mean, I, I hit a wall in my life where I actually couldn't pray. It, it wasn't that I didn't love God. It, it wasn't that I didn't trust God. But I just physically and mentally and spiritually had hit this wall and I didn't know what to say anymore. I, it's why I take so serious when somebody says, will you pray for me? <laughs> they may be asking you to pray for them because they can't pray for themselves right now. They, they may be in some place where they can't even call on his name right now because of the darkness and things that they're in. 
So take it serious when someone asks you to pray. But I had hit those walls, and I realized in those times of my life I was not thriving, I was not flourishing, I was just functioning and surviving. And I think we have those seasons, and I do believe God is an understanding God. I do believe He's a loving and compassionate God. There were times in His ministry where it hurt, and He was sad, and He had His struggles. And I, I, I think that's why that human aspect of God is so special and important, is He knows. He, he knows those moments of our lives where it's hard. It's hard to thrive. It's hard to flourish. But it's so important. If we're going to flourish, if, if we're going to thrive, if we're going to be not content in this little nursery pot any longer, then it's important we get deeply rooted. Being deeply rooted in that proper soil, being deeply rooted in this church, being deeply rooted into his word, being deeply rooted into a relationship with Christ. That and a little living water <laughs> can allow us to be what we need to be. In Matthew chapter 13, we'll read Matthew chapter 13, beginning in verse 1. It says, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the, when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Verse 8 says this, Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. And see, we could stop there and we could pick up on that and say, wow, there's some good stuff right there in that word. But then he goes on in verse 18. He says, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and he snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed along the path. <clears throat> the one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once it receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. Verse 22. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word. But the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil, he's the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces the crop, yielding a hundred sixty or 30 times what was sown. Now, can you imagine if, 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 if our church, if, if the global church would get hungry for his word? C could you imagine if just our church, on a good Sunday morning, I don't know, pre-COVID 225, If we really got in that good soil and we hear the word and we understand it and we apply it, could you imagine if we produced a crop a hundred, sixty, 
or 30 times more than what was sown in the congregation of 225. We'd have them standing in the parking lot on the hill down to the school. But I'm afraid we get content. I'm not beating up you all who are here tonight. You're here tonight. I know it's one of those preaching to the choir things, but often if I'm giving you a message, it's because God's laid it on my heart and he's already... If I took my socks off, you'd see how bruised up my toes are already. I mean, I've hit the realization there's been many times in my life I've been just content in this. And I've used every excuse. God, you already have me doing this. God, I'm already doing this for you. I mean, I'm... Boy, I'm, I'm way out there for you, God. I'm right on the edge of my comfort zone. And he says, bust the pot. Bust the pot. Get deeply rooted in me and grow. Don't be content. Don't, don't just survive. Don't just function. Flourish. Grow. Be fruitful. Do these things that I have asked you. This is in John, talking about the true vine. He says, I am the true vine and my father. He says, I am the true vine and my father. Is the gardener. Man, sometimes you read something that just jumps out at you different. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. So it'll be even more fruitful. You are already clean because the word I have spoken to you remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can try, but you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Those branches, they're picked up. They're thrown into the fire and burn. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And here is why. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. See, it's not for my own glory, Jack, that I want to get out of that nursery pot. It's not for my own glory that I need to grow. It's not for the wealth of Craig or the name of Craig that I need to flourish and thrive. But Scripture tells me his father, God, is the gardener. And it's to his glory, to his glory, that I must be fruitful. It's to his glory that you must be fruitful and not content. Now, again, tonight, I know I'm sitting along some of my favorite people in the church. I know if I'd tell you who was going to be here. But someone out there, somewhere out there on that interwebs listening, 
They're going to tune in, and I hope it challenges them. I, I hope it challenges them because it just takes a few more of us and a few more of us and a few more of us getting rooted. And if, if you see 30 times what you've, what's been sown, and you see 30, and you see 60, and you see 100... See, I, I, don't, I don't know how it's going to work exactly in heaven, and you can just say this is, this is Craig Petrie's version, and if, if you don't agree, that's okay. But I'm going to have a, an eternity. I'd like to think I'm going to have some time to sit by the river. And one of them's going to walk over and say, See that one there? You sowed into that one. Do you see those bunch of kids running right there? Yep, you sowed into them too. Man, that's what it's all about. It is to the glory of the gardener. To the glory of our Father. Man, that's a good word whether it came from me or not. I'm always so amazed. I can read and study and pray and not know how it's going to come out, but I sat down there and said the same prayer I say every time before I step up, step up here. And I said, God, remove Craig. Remove me. Let us just see you. I pray your challenge tonight. I, I, I pray whatever it is in your life that you've become content in, you, you get a little uncomfortable. <laughs> and you just stay rooted in the good soil. And you take the living water and you flourish. Most gracious Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you for this evening, for the time we've had, God. I, I have felt your spirit. God, it's so awesome. It's so awesome to be able to bring your word and get so much from it yourself. And God, I have been blessed by the things you've brought out tonight, God, that I didn't even think about. Didn't even cross my feeble little mind putting this together, God, but I thank you for weaving this together. God, for everyone here tonight, God, and most of all, to bring you glory. So, God, may we be not content to be in that little nursery pot any longer, God. May we grow. May we get rooted deep in your soil, God. May we flourish as a church, as a congregation, as individuals. God, as a country, may we flourish and see so many more come to you before it's too late, God. God, again, I thank you for this evening, the time we've had together with these wonderful people. Bless this week as it comes, God, that we will just tell someone about you this week. Again, we praise you and we thank you, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.